got tight and blood running through our veins. Get loud. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Cass here, and I am here for a, another video for the Tennessee Titans. And we're going to dive into five breakout players for the Tennessee Titans in 2023. These are players that may be lesser known to the common fan, who I think could make a decent impact for the Tennessee Titans in the 2023 season. Two of these, three of these players are going to be pass catchers because of the limited amount of help that the Titans do have at that position. So I think there are I think a majority of the wide receiver room is open for somebody to break out. I'm gonna name some honorable mentions right now that I think could break out for the wide receiver position alone. You got guys like Traylon Burks who could have a massive season. Guys like Racy McMath, who's never really been able to stay healthy since we drafted him from LSU, that if he could stay healthy, he could put some numbers up. You got guys like uh, Reggie Roberson Jr. from SMU, who was a speedster coming out that really never got a chance to play, that now with the lesser receivers that we have could actually get a chance to play. You got a guy like Nick Westbrook who's been on the team for a little while, could really make that next step and really get people that don't think he can be a wide receiver two, wide receiver three in the NFL, just thinks because of the position the Titans are in, that's what he's at. I think a guy like NWR could come in and really change some of the doubters in the NFL, but none of those guys made the list because these guys made the list. And let's start off with the Tennessee Titans 2022, 2023 seventh round pick from the University of Tennessee, Martin Colton Dowell. This 6'3 wide receiver, I believe, could make a massive impact because I think that if he can make the team, he, pres he provides size. At the position, I believe he's 6'3", 215. That's, that's ideal size for an NFL wide receiver. I have I have another um, NFL YouTuber that loves talking about the New Orleans Saints. He's going to be the non-Titans fan bias here. 6'3", 215 yep. would be the normal size for an NFL receiver. Would you agree with that? Yeah, prototype. So I believe if this guy can make the team, I saw what he could do against against teams, his highlight tape speaks for itself. And I know you can't just watch highlight tapes with players coming out of college. He's a de he's a really decent blocker, which is what Frable and Carthon look for, because this is still a run-first team. He reminds me of a lot of an NWI play style with a bigger build is really what it looks for. And that's what NWI truly lacks is a build. He can't really he's not really good at going up and getting balls. Where this guy can actually be doing that. And Colton's got a little bit of speed on him too. I I just and this is something not about breaking out. I don't understand why this guy wasn't taken over some of the players in the fifth, sixth, maybe even the fourth round. This guy really a lot of his intangibles are surprising that he might not he wasn't taken earlier than when the Titans snagged him in the seventh round. So now, we're going to get into a person we snagged in the fifth round, and that is 6'7", tight end Josh Wiley from the University of Cincinnati. This guy, I believe, could be a tight end 1A, 1B with the guy we drafted last year from the University of Maryland in Chigakonkwo. Chig's more of your tight end catch the ball, run after catch, a really good speed tight end. Josh Wiley's going to be your red zone threat. 6'7", massive build could really be that go up and get it, kind of like a Kyle Rudolph kind of tight end, kind of that Tyler Eifert type tight end. Um, a guy I believe could really go and play. Has some big shoes to fill with the Cincinnati tight ends. I just thought about that on camera. Has some massive shoes to fill for an NFL tight end from Cincinnati. But I think he... With the Titans having such limited receiver help, the tight end position is going to have to be massive. Chigakonkwo was helpful in that last year, but having a guy that can take the load off, kind of be that Austin Hooper-esque player that the Titans had last year in Josh Wiley, I feel like that's massive. Speaking of a player that played on the Titans last year, that's going to be my breakout next, and that's going to be the guy that moves from guard 
to center, puts on 30 pounds in the offseason, confirmed, and is Aaron Brewer. Brewer has put on 30 pounds, is around 290 now, was about 260 beforehand, is going to be starting center for the Tennessee Titans. Brewer could be massive in when he played center at 260, he was very decent for an injured Ben Jones. I think putting on that extra weight, being more of the around the NFL size that they look for at center, would help Brewer a lot. He looks massive in interviews. He looks like he's built. I think the guy can really play. So The next one I got is Rashad Weaver. Weaver, the Titans are going to run a very rotational game. You you get a guy like Arden Key. You get a guy like Rashad Weaver. You have Tier Tart. You have other guys that can really rotate in. Harold Landry and uh, Danico Autry are going to be your starter outside edges, while Jeff and Tier are going to be your inside tackles. But then you got other guys like Daquan Jones, uh, like Naquan Jones that could rotate in from FSU that could really play. You get guys like Rashad Weaver who had five and a half sacks last year that can really play. You get guys like a Jack Gibson who's going to I get a Jack Gibbons who was really good towards the end of the season for the Titans was a tackle machine towards the end of the season who's going to rotate in and play that inside linebacker position with Monty Rice and Aziz Alshier. I think the Titans are going to very a very mixed rate a very like sub in defense and I think Rashad Weaver could be a massive player in that and I think I think seeing him go above that five and a half sack total is very possible because I think Rashad could be a very good defensive end in this league as a rotational piece now we're going to get into this final one uh, another reason I brought Valente on we saw um, we were watching the highlights for the Giants game the first game of last season, where Kyle Phillips really in that two-minute drive to in the game was Tannehill's number one target. Was really getting open for Ryan, made some key catches, got the Titans down in field goal position. Of course, Randy Bullock missed it because that's what he did. But Kyle Phillips really played well in that first game. But then that next game against the Bills, he'd go down with an injury and really wouldn't play again the rest of the year. Uh, Kyle said that he believed that the reason that he wasn't really, he wasn't really NFL size. He went into the season at 160, a very small receiver, a very small build receiver. He's trying, from what he said, he wanted to put on weight in the off season. We have, we don't know if he's done that yet, but if he put on weight, I feel like he could very much come in and perform. Ryan likes him. Ryan's worked out with him in the off season. He said that. I believe Phillips could come in and play. Was the fifth round pick from UCLA last year. I think could make a key effort. I think him and Colton Dowell. If you're going to talk about people that could really make a difference in the wide receiver game. If Colton makes the team. Having that 6'3", 215 could be massive. Also having a slot guy like Kyle Phillips. Because Chris Moore, NWI, and Traylon Burks are most likely going to be your, your three. But. I feel like you could also have Kyle Phillips, Colton Dowell, somebody play for that mix role because there's a lot of openings here for the Titans at receiver. And if you want to be an NFL superstar and you're a receiver that hasn't got a chance, Tennessee's the open spot for you because the I you can argue that besides wide receiver one, there's no set in stone piece. Somebody could come out and make massive plays in the preseason. Like, for example, a Colton Dowell. If Colton Dowell comes out and makes massive plays in the receiving season, who says that Vrabel doesn't put him as the number two wide receiver on the depth chart? Because you're not paying Chris Moore a lot of money, so you're not guaranteeing him a spot. You're not paying NWI a lot of money, you're not guaranteeing him a spot. The only guy that's making a minimal amount of money is Traylon Burks. So there's no spots guaranteed on the squad at, at the receiver position. So that's why I feel like if you're a rookie and you want to get some significant play time and you were a 7th round pick, 5th round pick, and you want to get that next contract, Tennessee's the place to do it. Colton Dow and Kyle Phillips could be the guys to do that. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video where I was looking at five guys that could break out in 2023. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like. If you really liked it, subscribe. But above all else, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Anything you want to say, Valente, when we end off this video? No, I'm good. All right. Hope you, hope you guys enjoyed. Bye, guys. Tell them boys to tighten up. Tighten up. Let me hear you say it. Oh, shit again. Hype now. Tell them boys to tighten up. Tighten up. Let me hear you say it. Nice.